uh, uh, Jeffrey, uh, uh, Jeffrey Reed, um, he asked me last week to, uh, to record so he could watch it. And uh, I think I recorded like the last 15 or 20 minutes and then I couldn't find <laughs> where, where the file was. It disappeared. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm, <clears throat> uh, I'm recording this and I will forward it on to him and it will get deleted in due course. Um, so, um, you know, you won't, you, 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 you won't be exposed to, uh, uh, you know, a, a, ma a massive betrayal of your uh, privacy. So. Do you um, want Roger and I to share our animal stories again? Sure. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Well, you're, oh, trying yeah, to, okay. well, you're trying to remember. Uh, possums, I believe, are one of the very few wild animals that don't carry any disease. Mm. This is mm. for you, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> possums also, uh, I've read, uh, uh, devour uh, chicks at huge volumes, which I think it'll take a lot of ticks to make a real meal, ticks. but uh, they're supposed to be uh, uh, effective against, you know, lime ticks, but I guess they eat any ticks. Oh, here's another one of my captures. Uh huh. So do you, do you get these um, traps from animal control? Actually. Actually, you can. They'll lend you one. Uh, but I, I borrowed this from a neighbor and I've modified it over the years to uh, improve the effectiveness. This is for you, Jeff. This is uh, two raccoons in the trap. One of my proudest uh, raccoon capture moments. So. So, Doug, I had please. a basal cell too here. Do you have it now? Oh, to fill out, fill in the, the, the dead air spots. No, I had one. I told you guys, I I had one a while back, and it was in the same area as my bad tumor, and uh, it was a little scary until we found out it was only a basal cell. It's out, healed over. So I dodged a bullet there. Yeah, well, thankfully, here's gratefully. Here's, here's to all of us continuing to dodge bullets. Right. Um, Amen. So until until they opened up with that machine gun. <laughs> the, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, Doug, any any uh, further thoughts on? Uh, are you selling your place, or you're just thinking about it, or? No, uh, we're we're going to sell it. Yeah. Um, uh, probably, no, I don't know. Next next year, early, you know, February, March, January, February, mm. March, April. I don't know. Um, we've got a lot to do. We're not going to be back there until November or so. So, yeah, we got to get rid of a bunch of stuff. You know how that goes. Mm. Which place are you selling? Lafayette. <clears throat> Lafayette. And, so, and, there's really and, not much there for us to do anymore, you know? Mm. At least what we would, you know, be willing to do. I know they're out dancing every Sunday and all that stuff, but mm. we can't, you know, I'm too much at risk. Uh, I, you know, I get, I could get pneumonia over the phone. <laughs> Mm. so and that's not good last no. time last time it was on the way back to Louisiana I got um, seven days in the hospital man in Iowa mm. oh. <clears throat> Iowa? no mm. Iowa. yeah Grinnell Iowa. we were visiting we went oh, to visit Iowa, not Iowa, uh, Iowa, Louisiana. Iowa okay. the state of Iowa um yeah, we were on our way back to Lafayette, and 
um, visiting old Alaska friends that lived across the road from us in Fairbanks. And um, I, that night, we, you know, we got there that afternoon, felt kind of tired in that middle of that night, or actually it was about two o'clock the next morning, Kathleen called the ambulance and seven days later, I got out of the hospital. So, yeah. You said pneumonia, Doug? Yeah. Yeah, it was just pneumonia, but um, really hard to, you know, they had to use the most high, high powered penicillin type, you know, antibiotics and all that stuff to knock it down. And uh, just took a while. <laughs> well, you sure don't want to mess with COVID. When, oh, when no. That condition exists. No, that. Uh, between that and asthma, which my asthma is totally controlled, but um, you know, it's susceptible. So I can't really take a chance at anything, really. You no. just gotta be super careful. And it feels pretty safe around here. Um, well, everybody's masked and indoors at least. And, Every place, every business you go into, they've got little arrows on the floor for the traffic flow so nobody collides with each other and got little six foot stickers all over the place. And those, so, don't work, um, those don't work in Walmart. Uh, <laughs> no, in Walmart, every single person's masked and, and all that. Uh, Actually, Nova Scotia was going to open up and relax their rules, go to stage five, I think it is, uh, where you didn't have to wear masks indoors. And that was last, oh, just this last Wednesday was going to happen. On Monday, they had 27 new cases or something like that. Mm. Tuesday, they had a bunch of cases. And so Tuesday afternoon, uh, uh, Dr. Strang, the head medical guy, he got on there, he says, we're not doing stage five, staying at stage four, which is masks indoors, social distancing, you know, uh, restricted number of people in buildings, et cetera, and they're sticking with that. And they have like over hundred active cases, I think, maybe a couple of people in the hospital. The, the biggest problem is New Brunswick right next door. They opened up a month ago or so and they get hundreds of cases every day. Stuff like that. And uh, PI, the Prince Edward Island, they were getting zero cases, zero cases, zero cases but they have a bridge that goes to New Brunswick and they have a ferry that goes to Nova Scotia. People are traveling. They've opened up to the US. Americans been coming in and PI now, I think they've gotten like 20, 30 cases a day. Americans which, have to be vaccinated, don't they? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think if you're not vaccinated, you have to have a, negative case, oh. uh, negative PCR test within 72 hours of the crossing the border. If you're not vaccinated, you have to isolate for 14 days, take a test at day one, another test at day eight. And if that test comes out negative at day eight, you still have to go to your 14 days, stuff like that. But well, uh, yeah. anyway. I've been, uh, we've been, well, we're actually considering a moving to, but we don't have a place to move to. And one of us needs to have uh, reestablish a business to wherever we move. Um, but I, I, we've been looking at upstate New York, um, maybe around the capital area and south of Saratoga Springs, which is a big uh, vacation horse racing uh, place, a lot of money. <clears throat> so, but uh, but actually now I'm following uh, the um, 
COVID situation in upstate New York, they're starting to go up to meet our numbers as we come down. So the, the, um, there are many more of them vaccinated, so they, they don't have the bad um, hospital situations there uh, and the death rate that we have. But um, this stuff appears to really be spreading. The yeah, I, I just read, Michael, about uh, a small community north of Syracuse heading towards Watertown on the Canadian border. And uh, the local hospital, you know, mandated everybody in the, among their healthcare workers um, ha had to be vaccinated. And some huge number, I don't know, 40, 50 of them said, well, uh, we're going to quit our job. Um, and as a result, the, the hospital said, we have to, you know, uh, stop temporarily our uh, labor and delivery uh, services. Um, so, I mean, it, it, I mean, there's crazy shit all over. Uh, and it's, yeah, yeah. you know, and um, the, um, and I'm just wondering, you know, the, I think you have to track like what the, the vaccination rate is like in all these places. And I, we, we may not see that uh, sort itself out, I think for another six or nine months with all these various mandates coming out, um, you know, for people with who are employed and, you know, the army and, you know, I'm sure the next thing will be the post office and everything else. They all, so I think I think we're just headed that way, and it's mm -hmm. ultimately it'll be international travel and then domestic travel. Um, and I think it's the right way to go, and they can't go soon enough. But um, there there'll be a lot of blowback and and counter suits and whatnot. So um, I hope I hope it's successful. So, oh, Michael, uh, Saratoga Springs. That's a great place. That's where we got our PCR on our way up. We came up that way through uh, upstate New York and through the Adirondacks, all that. The, yeah. Gor uh, gorgeous place. Um, and uh, wound up, uh, you know, coming into Canada there to Montreal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, a beautiful my, place. My, uh, they got a couple of really country. great coffee shops there, too. <laughs> One of my cousins married a, uh, a woman from a well-off family from there, and now their son did pretty well. I think well, he's in he's in uh, investments, and uh, but anyway, now he they own uh, right, the family owns a couple of race horses. Yeah, it's a big deal there. You know? Yeah, maybe we can go up stay with them for a while. But uh... <laughs> I'll be up there going up there next month. Oh yeah. Saratoga Springs or New York, New York, Connecticut, Maine. I just what looked at the figures traveling? in Maine. You and Ross traveling? Yeah, I have a, a new grandson in uh, New York. Well, Roger uh, is a new granddad. Congratulations. Hey. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Whereabouts in New York, Roger? Uh, my it's, daughter and son-in-law have an apartment in Brooklyn, and they bought a house in a place called Dan, Downsville. Downs, oh, uh, Downsville Dam, really? Yeah. Right, yeah, Delaware River. That's Well, that's in the uh, Catskills, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh, I think that's I saw mean, My grandson, Ami. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, that's for you. Looking good. Yeah, he's uh, I think he's very good looking. He looks like me. Uh, and he's going to be a redhead, I think. He's got blue eyes and he's going to be a redhead. Red hair uh, is in his father's family. Doug, are you on, on one of those automated stair, stair climbers? I'm not, no, I'm uh, just looking for a phone charger. My phone is getting low. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> All right. I'm running out of juice. I forgot to plug it in here. Uh, okay. Let's 
see. I can, I can just do it here. <clears throat> Piece of my living room. Okay. So, so Doug, <laughs> would you figure becoming a, a nomad, uh, just like uh, our friend uh, Bart? Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Well, we won't be homeless because we got a house in yeah. Nova Scotia. But, but, but yeah, but, uh, but Kathleen, the yeah, Kathleen bought a, a different uh, van. You know, we, uh, we've had our Chinook camper for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And it's 20 years old now and going to be needing some major repairs. So Kathleen just bought bought another one. Uh, smaller, kind of more, more like a van than our bigger RV looking mm -hmm. camper. So yeah, uh, we'll pick it up. It's in New Jersey. We're using it as a demonstrator, so we can't pick it up until after January sometime. <clears throat> we'll have to go do that. It's got four wheel drive. It'll be kind of nice. Mm -hmm. Diesel? Yeah. Mm. Okay. A beetle? No. Diesel. Diesel. <laughs> it's, um, ah, I thought she said it's on a Mercedes. Oh, I was going to say, whoa. That's <laughs> no, back. It's on a uh, Mercedes chassis. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're really common now. You see lots yeah. and lots of. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you see them not quite a bit anymore. Uh, there's a lady, there's a lady I know who, uh, uh, from the contra dancing, uh, and I guess lives in Austin, but travels all over. And um, she's actually a dentist, so she'll go to a place where there's going to be a, a dance coming up, and she'll. Uh, be a, a temp dentist for a couple of weeks, <laughs> pays for her all of her bills. Uh, but she's in a, uh, a lovely compact um, uh, Mercedes di diesel, uh, uh, and it's uh, really lovely inside. So uh, quite the uh, quite the wonderful um, uh, machine. So what yeah. is, what's Bart? roving around in well a um, couple of weeks ago he was at um, uh, what do you call it Yellowstone or somewhere uh, and then he ended up in Idaho like overnight and then the next thing is uh, I think he spent Labor Day with cousins in um, uh, in Washington uh, Washington what, State um, does he have a does he have a camper no, but um, he's got a van. Well, he's got a, he's got a, a small SUV, and I think he sleeps in the back of that every so often. Um, and um, he's now in uh, somewhere in Wisconsin, uh, not far from you, Wendell, I guess, um, to attend a wedding. And um, uh, and after that, I don't know. Um, but um, the um, so um, that's that's about all I know about um, what what he's doing or planning to do. Um, but I'm I'm not aware that he's got any immediate plans to uh, to head back to uh, Lafayette. And um, well, I sold his, I've, sold his houses, didn't he? Yeah. Well, I kind of thought at the time that was kind of a, a radical move, and you know, now now I'm thinking, gee, you know, that's not such a bad idea because you know, I think it's a, uh, you know, this is one of the, you know, the really hot spots on the face of the earth here in Lafayette, and um, you know, um, it's not 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 a comfortable place to be. I, I I think I'd rather have a an efficiency apartment than sleep in the back of a SUV. But anyway, yeah. Um, it's uh, uh, yeah. He's been. I, I think he's been staying in uh, you know, 
what you call them, parks, uh, state parks and stuff like that. <coughs> that's, that's, that's about all I know. Um, oh, uh, did you see those pictures he sent a while back? It was, uh, it was a B and B, but it was different vehicles. I think it was like, oh yeah, yeah. One was a tree house and another was a old truck or something that was set up with a bed in it and all. And was that was that like in North Carolina or Virginia? Um, I can't um, remember where it was. Okay. It was a very eclectic place. Oh, yes, it was, yeah. So um, um B and B, new meaning, bizarre bedrooms. Yes. Yeah, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Wendell, when are you uh, headed uh, south? Well, first I'm headed west. I'm going backpacking starting on Tuesday in the Beartooth Wilderness area for a little over a week. Um, and then pretty much immediately after getting back, we're gonna head down to Louisiana for, uh, well, we'll be down there for a couple of weeks. So uh, including travel plan on three weeks or so. And um, so mid-October, uh, early to mid-October, we'll be coming down there. Um, I don't know, it seems a little bit crazy, but we'll get to see some safe, good friends, I trust, uh, you know, uh, people who are uh, acting sane in a crazy place. Um, yeah, there's there's a few there, of us. <laughs> there, there seem to be. Yeah. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing those people and uh, I don't know, taking care of our yard a little bit. Uh, I don't know how much rain we got, but <laughs> we weren't in uh, Baton Rouge or New Orleans for the uh, heaviest of the rains nor the worst of the hurricane. Um, there was about five inches here. Um, there was a little bit more in Blow Bridge, um, and that was over a few days. Um, and then north of here, I guess, trending towards like Bunky and places like that, paid upwards of about 10 inches. But uh, I think it was a lot more uh, to, to the east uh, in yeah. New Orleans and um, places like that. Um, and unfortunately, Grand Isle and Galliano and all of those got drenched, you know. Yep. Um, it's looking like, uh, I saw an interview with a guy who's a shrimper. And, uh, well, he's got a, a processing plant, employs like 30 people locally. And he said every single one of them had lost their home. Um, I mean, just, um, what? <laughs> Um, so it's a sad, sad uh, situation down there. Yeah, I don't know the, uh, you know, I'm glad there's some help uh, from FEMA and uh, um, it seems like a, a terrible sort of fix it, to, to rebuild there just doesn't seem reasonable. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but what else are they going to do? Well, you that's know? that's obviously the problem. Yeah. You know, yeah. what's the what's the U.S. going to do overall about uh, rate, uh, rising sea levels? And uh, that's uh, it's a, you know homelessness is already an intractable problem, but it's going to increase and uh, and be impossible for a lot of people. Um, and and some of those people are going to cause difficulties uh, for others because if you're if you're hungry and without shelter, you're going to do things to eat and to find shelter. Yeah, we're going to fix it by uh, giving nuclear powered submarine technology to Australia. Yes, yes, yeah, that'll do it. All that <coughs> pisses everybody. off France in the process. <coughs> Well, well, well said. Have you bought your uh, nuclear sub yet, Michael? 
No, no, we were going for the diesel. I'm going to get it from France, but <laughs> can you can you uh, can you submerge right out of Saratoga, or do you have to? You know, the sea is not up there yet, right? Well, we had, we're, we're thinking about putting it in the bayou here and sailing up there. Uh huh. <laughs> uh. Uh, there's a guy named Frisco Freddy that I met uh, in, uh, dancing in California. Great dancer, by the way. And uh, he took his houseboat through the, um, what's the uh, the waterway system in the United States? Intercoastal Water waterway. waterway. Yeah. He, he took the boat all the way from California to uh, here. You'd have to go through the Panama Canal or something. Um, well, he did that. And let me think how I don't know how he did it, but he might have trailered it to Texas. Yeah, maybe he shipped it. There you go. Yeah, ship it to Texas, then you're good to go all the way up, uh, you know, all the way around Florida and- Yeah, the intracoastal coast. waterway. Yeah. yeah, maybe he did. Maybe he did get it to the East Coast and then come down that way. But we almost uh, lost it uh, here in Louisiana. It had a very loud motor and uh, we were we were down, where the hell, I don't know, where we, some waterway where they also had these oil barges running up and down. So, he said, do you want to steer it? I'm like, well, hell, I, I don't, there's nothing in the way, you know, no problem. So I was uh, sort of steering it and he came running up from the back and he said, Jesus, don't you see that barge come up behind us? And I was like, no, I didn't see any. I didn't hear anything, I didn't see anything. So he pulled it over to the side and this uh, 200 foot barge uh, went by us instead of running over us, so. Mm. Well, I mean, do you have a rear view mirror there or? or I didn't, well, I didn't did, know where it was. Did he honk? <laughs> I think they, I don't think they, I think they were looking forward to like uh, no. taking us down. Well, they're, <laughs> all, they're often pushed from behind. So uh, they wouldn't have very good visibility. Oh, that's right. They, they, were, they were pushing it. Yeah. Yes. So the, the drivers on the water are just as bad as on the road, huh? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And uh, I'm glad he was in the back, though, Freddie, because he saw him coming. You know, uh, during COVID, we had nothing to do. We we're in our house forever. I got on the internet and I found out you could uh, take this course to get a pleasure boat operators certificate in Louisiana. So, you know, over the period of about a week, I went through all their little deal and took the little quiz and got a, got a deal mailed to me. So I'm a, I, and I haven't even been in a boat <laughs> and I got the ticket. <laughs> then they well, had the same thing for Canada. What's, what's a pleasure boat? What's considered a pleasure boat? Uh, anything you're not doing for hire. And anything that's uh, mechanically, uh, any kind of propulsion system. Oh, you, okay. It's for your pleasure. You're not, you're yeah. not driving a, a ferry for other people or a no, no, party no. boat. Okay. No, you can. But in order to legally... Uh, operate a, you know, a ski boat or sailboat or whatever. You uh, you got to have a, ah. a deal. This one's in Canada. This is, and then you know, all I did was just take the course. It was free, and uh, and then send the thing off. The thing is, I had to. This one here in Canada, I had to have a Canadian address, right? Uh, and they wouldn't mail it to the states, so I had to mail it to my sister's place in uh, British Columbia, and then they, my sister mailed it to me. <laughs> anyway, it was kind of interesting. You learn how many fire extinguishers you got to have, and who has the right of way, all that kind of stuff.
It's kind of interesting. So I didn't have anything else to do. Red, red right return. Yeah, there you go. Red on right returning. That's the buoy system, you know, those buoys out in the water. Yeah. Uh, how'd you know that? Uh, well, I did a fair bit of uh, sailing on uh, somebody else's boat, a lovely uh, 38 foot uh, uh, sloop. Um, and, um, and that was mainly in Buzzards Bay and in the Vineyard Sound. Um, sailing out of uh, New Bedford, um, Dartmouth, da da Dartmouth, Mass. Da da Dartmouth. <laughs> uh, so uh, on Uncle Billy's boat, and um, uh, uh, <laughs> he wanted to say that you know if ever there was an oops and a splash, uh, he said that's always a minimum of a hundred dollars. <laughs> you know, it's like a winch, oops, bonk. <laughs> Um, but uh, speaking of um, uh, barges being towed, I remember I'm telling telling the story of um, the um, uh, watching a sailboat uh, cut behind a uh, a towboat. Uh, but what the sailboat didn't see was that there was a line tying it about three or four hundred yards back to uh, to a barge. <laughs> So, so it sails right in and it, you know, takes out the whole mast. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, it used to, uh, used to be uh, Wednesday evening and Saturday morning races in, uh, in Buzzards Bay. Uh, a lot of fun. And, yeah. Um, well, wait, you didn't finish the story. Did the guy get run over by the bars that was being towed? No, no, he just... He got demasted. He just got demasted, you know. So, well, does, does it like, like take away your power? Uh, yeah, oh. but you have a certain amount of momentum and you just keep oh, okay. it. <laughs> so, he, he probably had an auxiliary engine of some sort, but, but right. yeah, but you yeah. gotta get that thing going turned on fast. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, lucky they didn't cut any person in half. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, some of those yeah, some of those cables are pretty low too. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Do do you do you have a license, uh, a tug license or something? No, it's just uh, you know like uh, uh, just per. It's uh, the law that you got to have if you're in the command of a any kind of a propulsion vessel. Oh. This is in Canada. No. no, in the U.S. it's two, but nobody goes by it hardly. I was going to say, oh, okay. I wonder how many of these people running the, the waterways here have uh, the number of fire extinguishers they're supposed to have in there. Yeah, right. Oh, well, the Coast Guard will get you, you know. I mean, it's huge fines if you don't. Coast Guard stops you. You better have your stuff. Well, the Life important practice. thing might be that Doug could now, as, as captain, he can perform <laughs> weddings as well. He has his <laughs> online certificate. No, I think you got to be outside the territorial limits. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that has been done. Well, you Cruise ships, probably, that's a big deal. You probably get a license to marry people online, too. I, I know that that's true. Yeah, I know I you can do it. it. Yeah. No, I can't remember. I had somebody, was it uh, Bart did that, didn't he? Probably. Probably. For a friend or a side? For a, like his niece or something. I, I don't know what it was. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but might it was somebody else. I Yeah, somebody I know. You guys probably do too. Got a thing to marry some relative or something, whatever. I know a couple of musicians that have uh, gotten themselves certified to marry people here in the state. Um, some of you might have heard Mary Deshane play at uh, uh, jams down there, mm -hmm. uh, or if not there, had, <clears throat> she used to play occasionally with a group on Prairie Home Show. But uh, she got her license to marry a couple of people who have since been divorced. But No guarantee. No. 
Well, she should have studied harder to get her license or something. Maybe that might have made it stick better. <laughs> she did a beautiful job. These people killed it for themselves. It's, uh, you know. That's too bad. It's what it is. So who was driving? Oh, Michael, you were driving. You were steering the... Uh, do you really think in that uh, in that story you were telling that that uh, the guy behind y'all was going to run into y'all, or I think Freddie thought the guy behind us was going to run into us but by well, by he, by total by accident, not by well. Uh, I think it could have been by accident. I think Freddie was expecting that we would get out of the way, and if yeah. we didn't get out of the way, we might suffer consequences. Oh wow, Jesus. Well, that's part of the rules. I mean, uh, you know, it's about maneuverability. Yeah, the and, barge is not going to stop quickly. Uh, yeah, you can't stop a barge. You can't even. So that guy couldn't have put the brakes on. Uh, no, it doesn't exist. So uh, actually, uh, sailboats, you know, have the right of way over power boats, for example. But you have to look at the situation if you're a little sailboat out there and you get in front of a vessel that can't turn, you know, like a oil uh, super tanker or something like that, uh, you know, you're going to get creamed and, and the super tanker won't get in trouble. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just glad that Tom Hanks was able to get picked up by the ocean liner and rescued in oh, yeah. that, mo that movie uh, Castaway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, I really like that movie. I'm just glad we didn't get run over. Yeah, no that's kidding. That sound, yeah, that sounds pretty hairy. Yeah, well, it, it seems like killed. the guy would have been blowing his horn. And, Freddie and, would have been pissed off, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it seems like the guy, if y'all weren't getting out of the way, he would have been on his horn uh, giving you a warning. I think there were a couple guys riding on the barge who were laughing pretty hard when they went by us. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, the bard should have given you five, five uh, blasts on a horn. Right. Thank you. That's the Amen. problem. This this houseboat where I was steering from was so freaking loud. I don't think I would have heard anything. What? Um, <laughs> that's terrible. Too loud to hear one of those fog horns. My God. Jesus. <laughs> Well, it all depends how close you are to your engine. Yeah. I think there are a lot of uh, tugboat operators who are deaf. Yeah, I could believe it. And uh, when I was doing child welfare work in Louisiana, in New Orleans and Jefferson Parish, I met, I met one of them who was functionally couldn't hear a damn thing. <laughs> Wow. Tales from the river <laughs> and the ocean. You know, then one case, uh, case husband, uh, a tugboat, uh, he was a tugboat captain. Faye, uh, K Wrights, K Wrights? K Wrights, yeah. yeah. I think he is. Uh, I feel, no uh, salt. Yeah. Yeah, he was a tugboat captain for a long time. Maybe he's wearing ear protection. That'd be smart. <laughs> Back in the day, nobody did. Although from the way he dances, I'm not sure he can hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That doesn't go any further than here. No, no, no. It's been recorded. Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Sure Wait, that. I missed that. What's the connection with the dance style and hearing? Nothing, nothing. I didn't nothing. say anything. <laughs> I, I missed okay. that too. Forget about it. Thank you, Wendell. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh man. Oh boy. That's bad. Well, I got I I've got who has uh hearing loss around here among us guys. Well, well I think I do. Anybody? I would I would say that's a hundred percent. Just I statistically, you that's 100 percent. You didn't hear the question. But um, you know, my hearing is still normal for my age, 
and that means I've lost a lot of high frequency hearing. Yeah. But uh, but I I'm actually not being, think I'm uh, not being told I need hearing aids yet. I actually think uh, my high frequency hearing loss got me uh, a classification at the draft board in 66 that kept me from going to Vietnam. Uh, but I never got my hearing aids until a year ago uh, because of uh, tinnitus. Long story. It's a long story. Oh, tinnitus. Yeah. Uh, while I was being uh, treated for tinnitus, they said you should get hearing aids because of your higher frequency loss. And I had a choice, but I, so I opted to get them. And uh, I like the uh, Bluetooth feature, which allows me to talk on the phone or do the audio here through my hearing aids. Yeah. And uh, the hearing is better. Things or clearer. So, can, can you connect it to your uh, big ass TV? No. no. No, I don't have a Bluetooth TV or a speaker. Um, I don't think. Anyway, uh, they said if I didn't get them, it would just get worse. And Costco had a good deal. And then a year after I, I got battery operated, they came out with it one that was rechargeable for less money. So anyway. Roger, do you have, uh, do you have uh, internet TV? No, uh, no. You didn't get, to, okay. I have a, uh, you know, streaming service. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was instead, an instead of an internet TV. My internet TV, I can get a, a Roku um, controller on my phone. And from that I can, stream to my uh, earbuds i'm i might be able to do that i haven't investigated it check that out hmm. i haven't really needed to do it but i got to check it out Roz will i have roku it. and uh oh well if you have i haven't roku. put it on my phone i have a remote yeah. you know what, there's an app yeah for roku there's a you just go, you know, just go online, look for a Roku app, download it to your phone, and and yeah, sure. You can control yeah, your thanks. your Roku device with that. Yeah, actually, it won't work for over uh, the air television though. That doesn't right. Work. The Roku will work. Right. Cool. Thanks. I'll check it out. But I don't can... need it, but it'll be fun to try. Yeah. Michael, when, when that's working, uh, you know, Anna can hear the normal TV and you've got a, a separate one that's coming in. Is that what I'm... Uh, not a, well, if we're using two different TVs, yes, we could do that. But if you're, using, that, the same t if you're using the same TV, it'll cut it. off? Mm -mm. No, okay. can't do it. But I, we, we have two TVs that are, have Roku's attached, so, you know, we can... Okay. We can de deal with that way. Wait, I missed that. I'm sorry. You can hear both over the air and through the, your big no, buds. I can't, I can't hear over the air. There might be an app that does that. I, probably there is. I mean, if you give, you can get. I think you can get an app for your TV that you put load on your phone. I'll bet you can. So if you have a what what kind of TV do we have? Oh, one. We have one of those cheapy Insignia TVs. I bet if you have one of those, you can go online and get an insignia uh, controller for your phone. I would check it out. Huh. And then you know, that might have that feature through it. The other thing I found out from Roku is, okay, with so little to do, I thought it would be great if I could watch th uh, Thursday night football last night. But Thursday night football was blocked for uh, uh, broadcast TV and through Roku. However, I could record, <laughs> I could record the game on Roku and watch it later. But I couldn't watch it live. How, how, how the hell is that possible? I don't know how they do it, but I, well, you can, because Roku allows you to record 
shows now. And it's no extra charge. I don't know how many you can record. But so I just, I was farting around after I got finished something else. And I went to the Roku app on my phone. Well, I went to Roku on my phone. And I, I looked, I said, well, look, the game is there again. But it wasn't there. It was there to replay. And, oh, I know what I did. I recorded it before the broadcast. That's what I did. I went to it. And looking for the game broadcast, I found this option to record it, which I did maybe by accident. And so afterwards, even though I couldn't watch it, I could watch the, the recording of it after the game was over. So don't tell me who won, because I want to watch the end of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's always an issue when you record a game. Yeah. You run into somebody. It, uh, yeah. So, and where on Roku is this feature? Uh, the new Roku screen, uh, you go to the, navigate to the left-hand menu of icons, and you're going to see one that says VCR. And that is, you can record shows. If you just go, look at, find a show in the Roku uh directory and you can record it Give but it how would you pull up a football game i went that was on your menu where the football game was supposed to be and it gave me the option to record it ahead of time jesus so uh, you could, yeah, so obvious what that means is if you want to record something that you, you won't be able to watch it during broadcast you can record it and watch it later this just, oh, Go to the listing on Roku and look for the option to record it. Are you talking about Roku channel? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this opens up infinite possibilities. It does. Too many to when even you can't, watch. <laughs> when you can't, you can't watch it while it's in progress. Well, the football game you could not watch when it was being broadcast live. But, but you, you can you watch a recording? You can. I'm watching the recording. Yeah. While the game is no, going no, on. Not while the game is going. Okay. That's why I don't want you to tell me who won. Who played? I'm not telling you that either. <laughs> who played? And I'll tell you who won. I'm not telling you. Uh, so that sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I I run into similar problems with uh, um, Premier League soccer from England and. Um, so, uh, and, uh, CBS now has the, uh, has the exclusive, so I can get most of it through, um, uh, YouTube TV, which we pay a subscription, uh, to, but, uh, but then a third or a half the games get blocked off because it's on Peacock, you know, so it's, um, uh, Bernard, if we can, if we can do use this trick to record stuff in advance, we can maybe dump YouTube TV. Um, well, I can't, I, I don't think I can transfer anything from me to anybody else. And, and if it's- well, That's if, not if what it, I meant. Well, oh. no, he's, he's paying for YouTube TV and he's paying more than we're paying for Roku. It's my yes. Well, I've got YouTube TV too, but I don't- yeah, but anything that is blocked on off the air because they're basically recording uh, off the air onto uh, YouTube TV. Uh, but if it gets blocked, um, they won't. You won't. You won't get it. But then I watch the highlights on ordinary YouTube. So you know, blocked how? <laughs> it's just not a, not on the menu. Correct. Yeah. Right. So anyway. So well, well, enough of that. Those, those, those so, are uh, more, more of my horrible first world problems. Yeah. Mo momentarily, back to the question of Bluetooth and speakers at the same time, uh, which Michael solved by using two TVs. Um, there's a bunch of stuff online about uh, splitters that let you do that. Mm -hmm. um, you put a, put a splitter, which allows you to play through your speakers. And then the other side, you put a Bluetooth adapter on. Oh. Anyway, there's 
there are device options that, uh, that can be added to a system. I'm going to have to sign off here uh, and get ready for another call at two o'clock. It's been a pleasure, you guys. And good seeing you, Wendell. Good to and see I've you. got a, uh, uh, a Premier League uh, game between Leeds United and Newcastle coming up at two o'clock. I hope you two. win. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got Ted Andrew Lasso Andrew later on. Uh, Washington football team. Yeah. Hey uh, Wendell, hey Wendell, when are you going he's, to Louisiana? Whoops, he's gone. gone. He's already he's, gone. He's gone, but I think he said something like mid mid October. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, we probably won't be there. Yeah. Um, so anyway, there we are, uh, boys and girls. Without I'm any pulling girls. for a AFC Richmond. Oh, oh yeah. Ted well, Ted Lasso, we're holding ourselves in advance. Um the, uh, we just want to binge it when we get it, and it's all been downloaded. Oh, okay. But mm -hmm. um, we watched the first series and it was fabulous. And any comments I've heard tells me it's, uh, you know, a wonderful uh, like, uh, another season. So that's good. Yeah. You know. All right. Well, Bye. Thank you. Take care. Bye, Bye, Bye Doug. Bye, 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 Bye,